It's uh, such a great honor for me to be here tonight. Waves are everywhere around us. Ocean waves, acoustic waves transporting sound, light, and other electromagnetic waves that carry signals to our cell phones, radios, and TV sets. And all of these waves are governed by the same fundamental laws of nature. Today's technologies rely heavily on wave phenomena. We need uh, waves to connect to each other wirelessly through our cell phones, to sense and image the microscopic world. And we also rely on wave physics to extract energy from the sun. Yet, uh, all these technologies, however widespread they may be, face fundamental limitations hindered by the limited set of materials that we can find in nature. In my lab, we look for ways to topple these limits by creating new engineered materials that push the boundaries of wave phenomena. My research explores the exotic phenomena arising when light meets special types of materials. We work at the intersection of photonics, that's the science that studies and exploits the flow of photons, that are the quanta of light, and uh, metamaterials, that are custom designed materials engineered at the nanoscale. These materials are tailored by us to offer exotic properties that can manipulate light, radio waves, sound, and other types of waves in unprecedented ways. I spend a lot of my time thinking about the numerous ways in which we can unveil new forms of interactions between waves and matter to produce unique fun functionalities and uh, this way drive new technologies. Remarkably, the ancient Greeks and Romans had already developed, uh, in some ways, a capacity to push the boundaries of how light commonly interacts with materials, at least to some degree. One example is the Lycurgus cap. It's a Roman glass vase realized over 1,500 years ago and currently uh, housed at the British Museum in London. Uh, this cap has a unique optical property. Uh, if the cap is illuminated from the back, the object uh, appears red to a viewer. However, when the cap is illuminated from the front, it actually looks green. So if we look at, the, at this vase under a microscope, what we find are very tiny metal particles made of an alloy, silver and gold, about 17 nanometers in size. That's about 10,000 times smaller than a single grain of sand. Believe it or not, these tiny particles are actually responsible for the remarkable optical effect produced by this vase. And what I find even more remarkable is that uh, the ancient Greeks and Romans were able to learn over time and with their limited uh, tools and understanding of wave physics how to carefully melt precisely tiny amounts of precious metals into the glass to create this optical effect. If we fast forward to today, we understand uh, much better how to exploit this phenomena and we can engineer materials with unique properties that transcend our imagination. Sophisticated metamaterials that, for instance, can be made with extremely thin layers of glass, one stacked on top of each other, and adorned with perfectly aligned tiny gold or silver nanorods. These nanorods have an approximate size in the range of a few tens of nanometers. We can control carefully the shape and the alignment of these particles, about a thousand times thinner than a human hair. And we can think of these materials as a modern day version of that Lycurgus cap, much more sophisticated. These materials uh, uh, you see here can produce holograms or realize the thinnest possible lenses for our cell phone cameras. And in the past 20 years, we have seen an unprecedented growth in our understanding of the wave phenomena arising in these metamaterials. 
making it possible to truly challenge the rules and physical limitations of how waves interact with matter that for centuries were considered as written in stone. Tonight, I want to spark a little bit your imagination and show you how metamaterials can truly transform our technologies. And I will do this by starting with one simple concept that we've been studying in the past few years. This concept is called uh, reciprocity. Uh, reciprocity is the property by which waves travel symmetrically between two points in space. We are used to assuming that waves like uh, sound or light travel back and forth between point A and point B with the same properties. So if you hear me speak, you can count on the fact that can, I can also hear you speak back to me. However, a few years ago, I wanted to find out whether it would be possible to build a metamaterial that can efficiently break this symmetry and become non-reciprocal. And surprisingly, the answer became even stranger and more interesting than I expected. Uh, let's stick with the example of sound waves again. Imagine there are two people around me and both people can hear what I'm saying. Vice versa, or better yet, reciprocally, I also expect uh, to be able to hear back what they are, the, the other two people are saying to me. In my lab, we created the first of its kind metamaterial device that actually breaks reciprocity for sound waves and completely changes the dynamics of this conversation. We showed that our metamaterial can efficiently redirect the sound waves so that each person speaks only to the person to the right, but hears only what the person on their left is saying. You may think uh, this can be quite useful at some boring dinner event, <laughs> certainly not this one. <laughs> but actually this functionality turns out to have enormous implications for many other technologies. For example, ultrasound, and sonar technologies in which uh, more precise and accurate measurements are possible based on these acoustic features. Over the years, uh, we've been able to extend this concept of broken reciprocity to other types of waves, from radio waves to light to thermal and mechanical waves, again uh, using properly engineered metamaterials. And in turn, these uh, non-reciprocal metamaterials have been offering us uh, truly unique technological opportunities in various areas. For instance, in wireless communications, by enhancing the efficiency in which we connect our mobile phones by increasing the available data rates. Non-reciprocal metamaterials can also improve uh, radar technology and enhance uh, energy harvesting and green energy technologies. But actually, it does not stop here. Uh, with custom engineered metamaterials, in my lab, we've been able to make small objects appear much larger than they are, which is extremely useful to image uh, uh, tiny details for biomedical imaging, for instance. And conversely, we can make large objects appear much smaller than they are, a sort of invisibility cloak for various wave types. We achieve these effects by creating met metamaterials that uh, literally change the way waves like light and sound are scattered around as they interact with them. The waves can go straight through our cloaked objects without scattering and you cannot even detect their shadows. These are just a couple of examples of the fascinating discoveries enabled by metamaterials that my group has been advancing. And uh, we continue to challenge our imagination, creating new materials that can trick light and sound into unprecedented wave phenomena. We believe this is just the start of the enormous opportunities that modern nanofabrication techniques and sophisticated material science and photonic engineering can actually achieve. For instance, we've been able to uh, exploit these ideas and explore the impact of metamaterials for optical computing, quantum technologies, and topological wave phenomena. This award is really 
a fantastic recognition for all the hard work and effort that uh, I and my colleagues have done over the past several years, and a huge boost for our future work and upcoming explorations. First and foremost, I want to sincerely thank Mr. Len Blavatnik, the Blavatnik Family Foundation, the New York Academy of Sciences for selecting me for this prestigious award. I share it with my group members and collaborators that uh, over the years have been working tirelessly with me on many open questions related to the science of light and its applications. I would also like to thank uh, the several funding agencies, companies and private foundations that uh, have been supporting our work. And uh, I take the opportunity to thank uh, my mentor, Professor Nederengheta, for inspiring me to pursue a career in science and for his continuous support the City University of New York for uh, the encouragement and support uh, throughout the past three years. And last, I thank my family, my parents, my wife Suzanne this year, uh, my son Matteo for the continuous support and love. I certainly share this success with them. Thank you very much. <laughs>